I'm going to add a quick little quiz. And in Moodle, a quiz is a test, and a test is a quiz. And uh, they're just interchangeable, but there are a lot of different settings. Uh, you can't change the name from quiz without really getting into the guts of things, though. So I'm going to just keep referring to them as quizzes, even though my final is a quiz. So we have editing turned on, add an activity, and I go to quiz. Now, before I go any further, notice there's a lot of stuff here. Blah, blah, blah. And remember the rule, ignore and explore. If you don't know what it is and it's not in your way, don't worry about it. But um, it's worth noting that setting up quizzes is really two discrete parts, uh, very much like setting up files. Uh, with file management, you have to upload the file and then do something with the file. Uh, with quizzes, you have to have your questions and then your quiz and then connect them. So in this process, we can actually create a quiz, but it has no questions, which will be the next step. So let's just give it a simple, a simple kind of, um, I don't know, basic math, you know, basic math. And we'll say a test of your basic math skills. And we can have the quiz turn off and on. And I've got this disabled. I'm going to leave it disabled. Um, we can allow multiple attempts and we can also time it. So we could time it and say you've only got uh, three minutes for this quiz because I'm only going to have one or two questions. We can have a time delay for the first and second attempts. Um, we can have the time delay between later attempts, so it gets very specific here. And if you have questions, want to read more about this, click the context sensitive help, and that will explain a little bit more. Like I said, when in doubt, leave it alone. Uh, questions per page, uh, this matters if you have really long quizzes. In this case, I'm going to have a short one, so I don't care. Shuffle questions, shuffle within questions. This um, prevents cheating in some ways because you can't say question 12A because 12 is different on every test and A is different on every test. However, if you have a test bank that has things like all of the above or both A and C, don't pick this or mess, mess them up because that won't have as much meaning. However, if you're creating your own, I suggest always shuffling questions and answers. There's reasons to go both directions and you'll, you'll get a feel of that if you do a few quizzes. Do you want to allow multiple attempts? If you want to train the student on the material, it's useful to allow multiple attempts. And they just keep doing it to, to get better. Um, but you can also use adaptive mode to penalize them. Um, and you can take the average of the scores instead of the top or the most recent score. And you see that under grading method. You want the highest grade, the average grade, their first grade, or the last grade. So the first grade is kind of teasing because you could take it again, but we were not going to use that grade. Um, the last attempt is also teasing because you could have done better and now you've done worse and you're stuck with the worst grade. But these all have options. I'll leave it at highest grade for now. And penalties is if you're using adaptive mode. Again, a lot of choices here, but you can click the help to read a little bit more about that. And then finally, all these insane checkboxes down here really are a bit confusing. And you see in this particular case, they're set up to certain defaults. Uh, as soon as the student finishes the quiz, they'll be given a feedback screen. And this is what shows up there immediately after the attempt. And the default at this particular school is that you can't see the answers, but you do see your responses and any feedback on those, which makes sense. Then later, they can go back to that. And in this case, they're seeing the same stuff. And then later, when the quiz is closed, if you had set the dates up here, like we saw before, um, these are the options. I'm not sure why overall feedback would not be enabled, but when in doubt, leave this stuff alone. If you're particularly conservative, just turn it all off. You know, say, no, I don't want any feedback. Um, of course, if you have overall feedback for the test, it doesn't really make sense to not show it. So if you did have overall feedback, you could do that. Um, and chances are you might want them to see scores. Right? That comes in helpful in all cases. Why would you ever want to hide that? Um, general feedback, I believe, is overall for the course. And the individual feedback is for the individual questions. Those might show up during the question taking. So you could start with something like that. Experiment. Um, look at it as a student and see what, what kind of options you like and what you want to do with the material you have. In my classes, I might have quizzes that are adaptive. You can take them again and again, and the score is average, whereas the final is a one-time shot and it's timed. There are browser security options to keep them from opening and closing. And this uses a pop-up and security. And you can have a password. So for example, if uh, you have them take it online, but they need to check with you first. Or if you announce the password in class to make sure no one is taking it at home without you knowing about it. Of course, be careful because the students will text it. 
Um, do you want to use a particular IP address so it only works within one room on your campus? Uh, then we have the other common module settings that you see in all the other activities. And then this is the overall feedback for the quiz. So for example, if they had, uh, if they got 100%, you could say awesome job. And then the grade boundary for 50%, uh, that's a pretty big range, say not awesome job, right? And then we could add more fields. So you could have a threshold at 89, 55, 72. Um, it is nice actually when you take a quiz to get some feedback, but it takes work to set this up. So I don't actually use it, but if I had lots of time and energy, I would go and put feedback on the grade differentiate. So above 90, I'd say great job, and above 80, I'd say not too shabby, and above 70, I'd say you could probably do better, and, and so on. So now I'm going to hit um, save and display. And what that then does is it takes me to this other interface, and you've got all these options here. And in particular, questions in this quiz, none have been added yet. And you have these tabs, Info, Results, Preview, and Edit. So now it's set me up to add questions. So over here, I can go into Categories, and it automatically creates a default category for this quiz, um, even though there's nothing in it. Or I can go and mess with the categories by clicking Categories over here. Or I can go right to Editing Questions here. Or I can Import, or I can Export. So if you have a Respondus test bank, or you've already got a bunch here, you can use those. In this case, I've got nothing, so I'm just going to create one question. So create new question, choose. It's going to be a uh, multiple choice. And I'm going to put it in the default for basic math. I can pick which category I want to create this new one in. The question name, it could be 3-2, but that's not really helpful when your tests are scrambled. So I'm going to call it the same as it is. What's 2 minus 2 minus 1? That's my question name. And that is actually going to also be my question. And then we have all these options here. Every question type has different options, but they're pretty self-explanatory. You can include images with them. You can have a penalty factor if you're using adaptive. You can determine how much each point is worth. And then this is general feedback for that question. So whether they get right or wrong answer, the feedback here will display if you've checked that option that we saw before. So this is only uh, one answer. So I allow one answer. And the number of choices, I'll just give it three choices. And uh, actually, I don't, I don't care to number them at all. I can just put no numbering. Or I could do A, B, C, you know, either way. And the answer will be three. And the grade I get for three is 0%. And these have to add up. You have to have 100% option to get full score. So what I say, two, 2 minus 1? And the answer is, the correct answer is 1. And the grade for that is 100%. And the feedback will be, great job. And then the, finally, I'll put a negative 1. And the grade for that, that's so bad that I want you to be penalized. So I'm going to give you a negative 50%. So you're actually going to lose points. Um, and you can do a lot of interesting juggling with this. Just remember, with complexity comes more work and more complexity. So, and I'm going to put really on here. So that's, I've got three. I could keep adding fields. I could end up having lots and lots of choices. I could add more and end up with eight or 15 or what have you, but three is enough. And then I could put feedback. So for any correct response, good job. For any partially correct response, your part right. And for an incorrect response, I could say nope. And again, it, this very much depends on your discipline and your attitude and so on. So I'll save changes. And now what happens is this question shows up um, here. You see it in green in this particular theme, what's 2 plus 1? And there's all these little options. I encourage you to hover over and see what they do, but the most obvious is on the left, add to quiz. You can also search, you can edit, you can move up and down, you can delete it, you can check it, and then here it says with selected, add to quiz, so on and so forth. All I do is click here, and then it's moved over here, and we have a certain amount of points, and the maximum grade is 100. That means the test is worth 100, and I only want it to be worth 10. Um, and it defaults to distributing that, so if there's only one question, that one question is worth 10 points. If there were three questions, um, it would average them out unless I specified something else. And then if we had lots of questions, we'd show page breaks and reordering tool. So anyway, I save changes here. 
Um, however, it's important to know this is sort of the question manipulation area. This is how we add things to the quiz and manipulate question categories. However, if you want to actually edit the quiz, that's up here, the standard button, just like we had with forums and assignments and so on. So I think I'm set. Um, now I can actually go and uh, click Preview and see what that quiz looks like. And there we go. It says Start Again. What's 2 minus 1? And then I can Submit All and Finish. But let's go back and see what it looks like from the home page. And all we have here is a basic math. And I click it. And it shows up. A test of your basic math skills. Continue. And it'll say, it'll go in like that. Choose one answer. Save without submitting. Now, if I had that limited the number of attempts, it would warn me. It would say, hey, you, you, uh, you sure? So I'll go update the quiz. And I'm going to change the number of attempts to, uh, let's see. Attempts allowed. Well, actually, we're only on one there. So, um, so there are a lot of different settings here, and some of them will some of them will prompt you and say, "Be careful of this and careful of that." I actually expected this one to say, "You only have one attempt," but it seemed uh, seemed to not do that. But that's okay. Just experiment, and it's important to remember also that every school has slightly different settings and slightly different defaults. Um, once you give a couple, you'll get a feel of what you're comfortable with. And I encourage you also to have a discussion forum for your students where they can point out any issues you have. So if you have a bad question, you can go in and fix it. And the wonderful thing about the Moodle quizzes is if you have a bad question and fix it, there's a button to regrade. And it'll go back and redo all the ones where you fix the question and update the grades accordingly. So there you have it. Um, I'll just go back. I haven't changed anything here, so I don't need to save it. I'm just going to use the menu to take me back. And there you have quizzes. In this particular case, um, this section was hidden, so I'm going to show it again. And um, I'm going to turn editing. Actually, I'm going to go switch the role to student to get one final look at how that looks for the student. Looks like that. We click it. There's the, the item, test of your basic, basic math skills. We'll continue our last attempt. And uh, notice there's a time. I said three minutes, I believe. Uh, we're going to choose one answer. We put negative one, and I'll submit it. And it warns me down here. It says, you're about to close this. Once you close it, you can't change your answers. I say, OK. And uh, now I've got feedback. Um, time limit is there. And so notice that it didn't really give me good results because all those feedback, feedback items were unchecked. So I really probably ought to recheck those. Let's go and do that. So I'll go back. Return to normal role. Turn editing on. Edit. Remember how I said 